Welcome to the next SpectraFoo tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at how we get audio out of SpectraFoo and how to use SpectraFoo's signal generator. So to begin with, let's look at our output routing. To do that, we go to the Window menu and Show Routing Window. You could also use Command T. And here is our Analyzer Control and Routing. To get audio out of SpectraFoo, we set our outputs here in the output matrix to be the internal bus. The internal bus is SpectraFoo's built-in internal audio mechanism. We can use that to play back tones, to generate tones, so that's how we're going to send audio out of Foo to whatever core audio device you'd like. And here on the input matrix, I'm currently looking at FireWire 1, which is my microphone coming from my Metric Halo ULN2. I'm going to switch that to the internal bus so that I am monitoring what the generator is doing. This is not only useful for showing you what it's doing, but this is great if you're measuring the transfer function of a device or a system versus the built-in generator. Um, this lets you monitor your generator without actually doing a physical loop. You could also use this, let's say you wanted to check the performance of an EQ. You could generate pink noise, send that out through an interface, through your EQ, bring the EQ back into SpectraFoo, but also be able to measure the generator's output directly so that you have a comparison. So with that routed, let's close up this window and let's take a look at the generator. Here in the Analyzer menu, Show Signal Generator, and here we go. The signal generator is actually nine oscillators as, as well as a white noise and pink noise generator. The oscillators can be run individually, so we can run them one at a time, or you can run several of them at a time by clicking your Enable buttons. You can also use an oscillator with either of the noise generators if you need. So I'm going to start off by just enabling this. And here we have the start frequency, start level, and start phase of the generator. If I'm doing a sweep, I can specify what I want my frequency or level to be. The asterisk here means just use the same value as the start. In these columns we set the times for the generator. We can set a pre-delay or a post-delay and set the duration of the generator in seconds. This defaults to 3600 which is a very long generator. Here we can set the sample rate and something to keep in mind is that you can set the signal generator sample rate to be different than the audio system. So let's say you're running your system at 44.1, you can generate tones at 96 kilohertz or vice versa if you need to do this. You can set the sample size in whatever bit size you need. You can dither the output of the signal generator. So if you're running your system at 24-bit resolution, you can still generate a 16-bit tone. And here you can pad the overall output of the signal generator by whatever level you would like. So if you were running three different tones, you could run 1K at full range with the pink noise generator at minus 80 to check your noise floor of a device and still pad both of those by 10 dB if, if need be. So there's a lot of flexibility to be had here, but we're gonna start off pretty simply and let's just generate a 1K tone. So here you can see our 1K. It's just barely clipping here at uh, 0 dB full scale. And you can see here that we've got a full 1K tone. And it gets kind of wide down here at the bottom at lower levels. This is, you know, minus 60 and down. The oscillator tends to widen out a bit. So let me stop this. What we can do is we can synchronize the signal generator to the rest of the system. And by doing that, we'll get a much more accurate tone. As you can see now, this is a very narrow 1K tone that's being generated. So if you need the utmost accuracy in the signal generator, you should synchronize the signal generator to the rest of the clock. One caveat with this is that you cannot sweep when you're synchronizing the signal generator. So turn the synchronization feature on only when you're dealing with single tones. You can't sweep 
a synchronized generator. But you can synchronize for multiple tones. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another generator at 500 hertz and do a multitone. And here you can see all of the interaction that happens when you've got these two tones going at the same time. And we'll make that stop. So let's take a look at doing a sweep. I'm going to enable this generator and start at 20 cycles. And I want to end at 20K. And we'll go for five seconds. And I'm going to put in a five second post delay just so that we can stop the sweep before it cycles again. The other parameter that we have here is that we can set what type of sweep we're doing. So you can either do a linear sweep or a logarithmic sweep. I'll do both so you can see the difference. So here is a five second linear sweep. And here is a five second logarithmic sweep. So you can use whatever type of sweep you need, depending on what your task is. Next, I can take this out. We have our white noise generator. And a pink noise generator. You can also set the pink noise to be RMS. Next, I'm going to show you how the burst function works. So I'm going to leave this on our pink noise generator, and I'm going to enable the burst time. So this is where we set the period of our burst in milliseconds, so that's 125. And the period is the multiplier for the gap in between bursts. So this will be 125 milliseconds of pink noise, and then 125 milliseconds of silence, and it looks like this. If I increase the burst period to, let's say, three, we'll get a larger gap in between sound. The other parameter here is the window function, which kind of rounds off the edges of the burst to make sure that we don't get corner distortion. Let me decrease the period so we can Hear that a little easier. And that rounds out the functions of the signal generator, except for these last few little file management things. For our signal generator parameters, we can save. So if I wanted to, I can save my parameters. I could reload those parameters back in. I can also save this as a file. So let's say I wanted to do uh, pink noise. So I'm going to take this out of burst, take off window, and I will say save as a file. And here I can say, I'm going to name that pink. And I want five seconds at 24 bits. I want it to be an AF file. And I can go ahead and save that. It'll rate my audio. And done. Now I also have the option of making this a capture. So if I make this capture pink, five seconds, you'll note here that all captures are 16 bit. I hit OK. And here is our pink noise as a spectrofood capture, which will be the subject of our next video.